Hi. Uh, yeah, this feels awkward. So I've seen a bunch of other devlog YouTubers doing the in front of the camera thing. And yeah, after I thought about it, it makes a lot of sense because you don't have to spend time editing relevant video clips under your video. But anyway, I actually have a good reason to be on camera because for the past few weeks, I've been working on the dialogue and event system for my game Gridlocked, which you can wishlist on Steam, by the way. And to introduce it to you today, I have a very special guest. I would like to introduce to you Pete Hardhat Peterson. Um, what was that? Um, Pete, I'm pretty sure we can't get away with using other game sound effects. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. So Pete here will help me introduce all the progress I made on the game, specifically the dialogue system and event system. Let's jump into it. What do you say? <laughs> Such a joker. As covered in a previous devlog, one of the focus points I was committed to working on soon for Gridlocked was the dialogue system, which I mentioned I would be using Yarn Spinner for. During December, I collected the willpower to dive deeply into the topic. Since it was some time since I last tinkered with Yarn Spinner, I decided to check for any interesting updates on the Discord server. And that's when I saw. Yeah, as a late Christmas present, Yarn Spinner 2.0 was set to release in late December, which was great timing as it meant I could use the latest and greatest version for the game. As an overview, my plan was to build a system I could use for driving the game's narrative, in a robust but still manageable way. Yarn Spinner would be responsible for driving individual dialogues with features like branching choices, keeping track of different internal states, branching dialogue based on those, etc. But I also wanted a more easy way to control and visualize it all on a higher level. For this, I decided to implement a graph-based solution using the Xnode Unity plugin. I'm not gonna bore you with the coding details. If after I show it off, you are curious about how exactly I put it together, let me know, I could do an overview video of the code if there is enough interest. Basically, there is always a single start node where execution starts. Then there are different node types to drive the events of the game that can be triggered. Yarn spinner nodes simply run a specified yarn script. Graph execution pauses until the yarn script is finished, then, unless otherwise specified, continues to invoke the next node. By default, each yarn script is only executed once, so if a dialogue already happened, it is just skipped. Event nodes don't have any output ports, they simply execute a unity event when invoked. I'll use these nodes when I want something to happen in the game but doesn't involve any dialogue so no real point in writing a yarn script for it. Things like certain objects spawning or level state changes and so on will go in here. Wait nodes simply pause the graph execution for a specified number of seconds. I can use them for example to create a loop in the graph for idle dialogue every 30 seconds. Next up conditional nodes. Here each node has a pass or fail port that is tied to one or several conditions which are serialized unit events. So for example, I could hook a condition to a specific level state or variable. Now keep in mind, I can do most of these types of checks in the yarn scripts themselves too, see later in the video, so I only use them in the graph when it makes sense for maintainability or would potentially mean having to call a dialog script that wouldn't actually do anything when executed. And finally, event listener nodes. These are similar to conditional nodes, but instead of executing Unity events to check for a condition, here the node adds itself as a listener to specific events, and execution of the graph will continue from the specific port every time that event occurs, unless it's specified to only fire once, in which case it removes itself after the first invocation. Now I can have multiple graphs executing at the same time. The plan is to have individual graphs for each level, then a couple of graphs shared between all the levels, for stuff like dialogue when you pop an achievement or other story dialogue that is not related to a specific level. So after having an event system in play... <laughs> Hang on, something feels different. <laughs> 
So anyway, as I was saying, now that I had a fairly convenient event system in place, I could focus on the actual dialogue with the YARN scripts. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the individual YARN spinner features because there are a lot of them and it's a very nice plugin, but I'll just give you a brief overview of how I'll be using it to script the story of the game. So yeah, YARN spinner does come bundled with a bunch of cool features like the typewriter effect. Unfortunately, as far as I could tell, the speed of typing is always constant, but I wanted to be able to change it during the dialogue to keep it more natural, like the character was actually speaking. So I re-implemented the default typewriter effect to pause for a fraction of a second on certain punctuation characters. And also taking some inspiration from Code Parade's Hyperbolica devlog about his dialogue system, check it out, it's very cool, link in the description, I added special handling for the underscore character, which I could use for pauses in the dialogue. For the handling of character portraits, I implemented a command handler where you can define the pose, eyes and mouth of the character. Each character would have a sprite with all the variations, so on each line of dialogue the portrait would cross-dissolve between the two sprites. There will be some minor NPC characters who won't have any portrait or maybe just a generic grey outline character. Currently the only character with a portrait is Pete. The artwork for Pete was provided by the artist and good friend of mine, Black Six. You can check her out on Instagram here or at the link in the description. As Pete mentioned at the start of the video, the game doesn't really have any sounds yet, like at all. But eventually the typing effect will be a soundbite playing on every second or so character typed, similar to how other games do it. So let me show you the first prototype of the very first level of the game to give you an idea of how the system will look like. Here you see we will start with the level 1 start yarn script node. This is a greeting from Pete and a simple introduction to the game with a couple of simple dialogue choices to let the player know they will be able to interact with him during the game. We jump then to a different yarn node where he talks about the camera controls and asks you to try it. Here the player has the option of skipping the tutorial, in which case we set a flag for future checks. The dialogue finishes and execution continues in the xnode graph. Execution here splits into two. We will give the player 5 seconds to play around with the camera, then continue with the next tutorial dialogue. We also register a couple of event listeners. First one is fired when the player selects a grid object to place. Let's look at this yarn node first. We have a few if-else blocks here. First, there will be a different interaction if the user decides to skip the tutorial, which has the potential to lead to a dialogue choice that could have an impact for later on in the game. Otherwise, we check if the yarn node level 1 tutorial grid objects was visited. This is the dialogue node that would play if the player waited those 5 seconds. If this node wasn't visited, it means the player selected the grid object on their own, without prompt, so Pete will acknowledge that. Nothing else on this branch of the graph. The next execution will happen when the level event for the level completion is fired. That will trigger the level 1 complete node with some more dialogue. Then it will go into a loop where an idle dialogue node is repeated every 30 seconds. In this yarn node we increment a counter to keep showing the next idle dialogue in a row. And that's basically how this whole system I built will work. I do plan on having many game states and variables tracked this way, creating many story and dialogue branches the further the player gets in the game, but even if for some reason I have to end up cutting back on the scope of these, it was still a lot of fun getting this system to work, and I'll be glad to have the flexibility I need when writing the final script for the game's story. So that's that. Um, Pete, any closing words you would like to say to the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pete's such a joker. No, seriously. Okay, that's enough out of you. Um, yeah, so thank you again so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think of these on camera video devlog things. I'm not really one for talking into a camera by myself, so I don't think I'll do this too often. If you enjoyed the video or are interested in Gridlocked, you can wishlist it on Steam, link down in the description. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, um, leave a comment.
the cringe. This is so cringe. <laughs>